Here she is, the one and only Mackenzie Dern. Is she there? There she is. Hello, Hi. Mackenzie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations, Parabéns, on the uh, the big win. Uh, very exciting stuff. How do you feel about this Mackenzie Dern 3.0 that I'm trying to uh, push on people? Are you okay with that? Are you uh, are you in line yeah, with what I'm saying? Good. Yes. Do you know why I say 3.0? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so I feel like 1.0 was like the the you know the jujitsu expert that came into the sport and you weren't really quite sure how this would all turn out, this and that. 2.0 was post, you know, birth, yeah. right? And now, and then you came back and you were like super mom out there, super strong. And now 3.0, you've, you've been very open about this new chapter in your life. And there's like this like new aggression in you that you're just like going out there to kill everyone. So I feel like this is like the third <laughs> version, at least in MMA that we've seen of you. Are you okay with this? Yeah, yeah. I'm ho I'm hoping this is the version that gets me to the bell. So <laughs> I hope we get to three. But I mean, hey, if maybe after we get the bell, then it'll go to like a 4.0 or something like sure. that. You know, <laughs> like the champion, you know, defense McKenzie, you know. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying. I mean, this is, I mean, these are all like parts of me, you know. So it's just they're kind of each getting um, unleashed at different phases of my life, you know. Um, so I mean, even in jiu-jitsu, I feel like when I became a black belt, I took me a couple of years to kind of get into the black belt level, you know, because you're fighting other black belts, but they're black belts for like 10 years, 15 sure. years, you know, and you're like the new black belt. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just kind of start to get out that, mat starting to understand the maturity part or like that fight intelligence of the whole MMA thing, <laughs> of the whole MMA thing, you know, I mean, I did like with Yen when I lost, I... Like I did so much on the ground that anyone who does jujitsu for us, nope. sorry, no problem. For anyone um, that does jujitsu, that would be like a 10 eight round um for us, you know. But in the fight, I I'm I couldn't get it, you know, um, because I'm doing all these submissions on the ground and this and that, and like I know how deep it was and all these things. And then thankfully on this last fight, like one judge gave me three 10 eight rounds, you know, <laughs> in one fight, you know what I mean? So it's like, just kind of understanding like, okay, I mean, I go for the finish. I go for the finish. I'm never going to be like a boring fighter, which is a big scare of mine, like nervous. I don't want to be like a champion. And then people like don't want to watch me fight and stuff, but to understand that the judges are still there and they still exist and we are fighting the best of the best. So I can't be so hard on myself. Like, if the girls do have defenses, so at least let me win the round, you know, and being impactful and aggressive and win it by their judges, you know, and stay on top instead of being on the bottom and doing all these submissions where it's hard to get attending. Right, you know? right, right. No, and you did all of that. Um, but by the way, uh, it's it's kind of wild to see you with a black eye because I feel like um, in the early and and what happened to your voice? Did you lose your voice or is, or am I crazy? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm I'm a little bit like stuffed. My nose is stuffy and okay. my voice. I think it's just I. So for my weight cut, and I'm not saying it is because of this or not, but I since I gained more muscle, I kind of went back to that whole like dehydration thing. You know, it's like so I did that for this camp, and it was like the first time since UFC Rio in 2018 that I didn't make weight by like seven pounds. So it was like scary for me. Um, but I mean, you still go through like this whole like you're in there you're in the um, hotel room and then it's like you get so high and this you want to turn the air air conditioning up as high as you can you know and then you go down and then it's in vegas you're walking so i i'm a little like stuffed up right now okay. <laughs> but was it a tough way cut but uh no i mean the toughest part was getting past that trauma that i had been and there i'm like well like a bath you know and then the sauna again like mm. i had been i don't know maybe five fights six fights like waking up just on weight just like work like hitting mitts and i'm on weight you know so to kind of go back and pass that trauma like okay i mean you suffer a little bit you know it sucks to be like in a hot bath you know but it wasn't that bad but yeah it was good and this was this was a knee man angela's tough yeah she is <laughs> tough. She, she need me too you know like on the cage you know so i got like a knee i have like i'm kind of blue here like yellow from like some elbows that she gave me you know so i mean She's a tough girl, you know, people, I think we're kind of talking about my performance, but I'm like, man, <laughs> I I was trying to really give it to her and she just like wouldn't give up. Uh, the the thing about the eye that I was going to say is like symbolic because I feel like early in your career, people are like, oh, she maybe doesn't want to get hit. There's like, look at you, you're sporting the black eye <laughs> like a champ. So clearly uh, you're okay with getting hit. Did you think that you were close to finishing her at any point? 
yeah, all the, a lot of the, a lot of the times, even like the armbar, I thought I was gonna get it. Um, like I thought she was gonna like go. I thought I was gonna be able to break it. Like the ground and pound. I mean, I was like, I thought it was like way more impactful than before. My ground and pound used to be like, tick, 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 yeah. you know. <laughs> and I really trained hard this camp, like just like on the on the dummy, you know, like getting my hand to hit the right place and be more impactful, you know, and kind of just the posture and so. I could see the difference, you know, the judge, the ref kind of getting close, you know, like we're, I'm like ground and pounding Angela, like right in front of her corner, you know what I mean? And I'm just like hearing the like nervousness for them, like you got to do something, they're going to stop it, you know? So I'm like, man, I think I'm getting close, you know? <laughs> but she stayed in there, you know? I, and re- the, and <laughs> I remember we talked about uh, the Apex and you said like you didn't really love fighting at the apex and then you went from charlotte abc card to the apex they moved your fight were you bummed about that i was nervous i was so nervous um it was like that was the they were like okay are you, do you accepted you accept it and i like kept like it was a couple hours like i don't know maybe like 10 hours i was like i don't know i don't know you know i was really like just trying to to i don't know because like my divorce and everything that's going on my coach was out of town um, like new, I'm, I left my management company, um, you know, just training. Everything was so crazy. I was kind of just trying to get in, coming off a loss. I was just trying to kind of get my fight in, get my win, mm. pass under the radar. You know, there was like going to be bigger names on the card. You know, I was just kind of wanting that, that adrenaline from the crowd. But in the end, it all worked out, you know, even better than I could imagine. So I'm glad I didn't fight it too much and kind of went with the flow. It was like, okay, if they're giving me this opportunity now, it's because um, I'm supposed to break that suspicious superstition now, you know. But I, actually, on my way to the Apex, I was like thinking like, man, since we're working so hard for me to be like calmer in the fight, you know, not that I get like nervous, but I uh, excited you know it, like you know you get hit and you want to like get into the fight you know but i'm not like nervous uh so we're trying to be calmer i was like you know actually it's better that it's at the apex because the crowd kind of gets that emotion in you you know and i'm trying to be a little bit less emotional and more um seeing things and just like um strategically good you know winning each round you know hold the position on the cage right. hit her you know instead of like get to the cage and try and take down and i'm spending all this energy right 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 um you, you know what was really interesting about you going into this fight that I thought and you just referenced it there? Like, you've you've gone through a lot over the last few months, and I feel like you were very open about and willing to share what you've gone through. Uh, you mentioned your divorce, um, parting ways with your management, your coach, Jason Perlo, not being around. He was helping Luke Rockhold for his uh, bare knuckle. A lot of people yeah. would keep this in and not want to openly share this. Uh, why were you willing to do so? Um, I mean, one, like, I don't, I don't have anything like really to hide, you know, like it's all part of my life, you know, and I'm like, and I know that tons of people have, pro- you know, and it's not just me, but I know tons of people go through problems, you know, so I think like, just if I can try, and I don't know, like, inspire people or show people like, hey, I'm just like everyone else, you know, I go through hard, you know what I mean? I go through life things, you know, it's not just hard because of the the fighting, but hard of regular life things, you know, that tons of people go through. Um, But like, I thought about getting out of the fight, like the first month, I thought about leaving the fight, but I like, like, no, let's do it. I'm not going to let someone else, you know, take me away from doing what I wanted to accomplish, you know? Um, So I thought it was important just when people ask me about it, um, to stay true. Um, and also too, I mean, just like, even with, for me, the divorce was the biggest thing, like to be going through like this whole justice system and I don't know, kind of being like the woman on the side of this whole thing happening. And I'm going through this like divorce for a camp and I'm having to like prove and defend myself in the justice, like for the justice system that I'm not a negligent mom because I'm, I work you know, and I'm not a negligent mom because I take my daughter to train with me when she's not at school. Um, and I'm like, this is bizarre for me. Like, this is so crazy. I, I felt like I need to say something, you know, and just represent, like, it's not bad that we work mm-hmm. as moms, you know. And thankfully, my job lets me be like a stay-at-home mom and work at the same time, you know, right. because my job is very flexible, you know. So um, I felt like I, I, I've i been having to defend myself this whole time for things that I never thought I'd have to defend myself for. Um, so to be able to talk about it, even just like, you know, like abuse, like in the relationship and things like that, like 
I'm a fighter, you know, so what I represent, for, I, I believe what I represent for women's is like, I can defend myself. Um, you know, I have confidence and all these things, but being a fighter, you're like a weapon. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're like a weapon. So it, like I was in a situation in my relationship where I couldn't even defend myself because I was getting like threatened that if I did anything, I'd be taken to the police and I could lose my daughter and I could do this and I could do that. And I'm like, how am I someone who can defend myself? And I'm in a situation where I can't even defend myself. Like the person's yelling at me, being aggressive with me, like at my work, at home, you know, putting me in situations that I can't even do anything because if I do something, they want to take me to, to the police and say that I'm me as a fighter. I'm the one who's being aggressive. I'm the one that has this, you know, and it's like, that that's like a type of abuse, you know? So the moment I decided to leave, it wasn't be, like, it was more than that. I don't want my daughter to think that that's a healthy relationship, you know? And sometimes us as fight, fighters, we have this image like that we're, we're the ones that start fights with people. We're the ones that think, but we get put into situations where people want to try and get a reaction out of you um, and have you do something um, just to be able to, to like sue you or try and take you to the police or try and do something like that. And especially someone that you live with, that's, it's not healthy, you know, and it's, it's, it's crazy for me because I always want to represent someone who can stand up for themselves and can defend themselves for all the women out there, you know? So for me to see myself in that situation was really hard. Were you physically abused in the relationship? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. And is that, yeah. is that ultimately why you decided to leave? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just like, I mean, family for me was the most important, you know? So, um, I stayed in my relationship, like, because I believed in the family and I believe that that's what, you know, God wanted and stuff. But there's a certain point, like where you try and try and try and things don't change and it just keeps getting worse and worse. And then, like I was saying, I wasn't even able to defend myself. Any, like I couldn't defend myself. Like police were getting called to the house. Um, think like it was just getting out of control, you know, and like how going through that in front of your daughter, you don't want your daughter to witness that. Um, so the moment that I felt like I couldn't even, I wasn't safe, you know, and that's why I left. <laughs> you well, know what I mean? Cause I wasn't safe and it's crazy because like, I feel like if I could defend myself, I would, sure I would be able to, you know, but it's more than just me hitting someone because they're trying to hit that, trying to hit me or they're trying to um hold me down or they're trying to do things you know the fact that I couldn't do it because they would take me to the police was where I felt like I was stuck you know uh, when did you leave this was a year ago okay so this was like um May last year okay so uh that's before the Yan Chanan fight yeah did did the stuff that was going on in your life, did that affect you in the fight? Would, you know, not to, I know fighters don't want to give excuses and things like that, but looking back, did you feel like it affected you, your performance? For Jan, no. I, I, Jan, I was so, I was so sad and frustrated because that was like, since we had just split up, you know, it was kind of in the beginning. And I think always for your child, you want to have the best relationship possible. So even when I left, um, you know, I didn't, I always wanted to have a, uh, a civil relationship, you know, um, with her dad. So, I mean, I was just focused, focused, focused. I was, it was kind of in the beginning, you know, we just separated. So it was kind of like, just focus on that, you know, but we haven't, we hadn't gone to court. We hadn't gone through these things that, you know, all of a sudden you're like, you're, you're on the other side, you know, and where you have to prove yourself to a judge and you're like, man, this is crazy. You know, <laughs> that, that, this fight with um, Angela, this camp, that's where the things started to get intense, wow. you know, when you're understanding, like, like child support and you're understanding, like, these things of, like, oh, a stay-at-home dad or stay-at-home mom. And you're, like, like this is crazy to me, you know, because, like, you do everything you do. You know? I mean, we get punched in the face and we're working and we're going after our dreams. But, like, you need to pay someone else just to like be with the kid for a couple of days. You know what I mean? It's, it's doesn't make sense to me. And then you still have to prove all these things. So that, that takes a toll. All of a sudden your lawyers are calling you, Oh, you need homework. You need to prove this. You need to prove that. And you're like, I just want to fight. Right. <laughs> you know, I just want to fight. I want to take care of my child. I want to provide the best life I can for her. And so that kind of part is just on emotional part. But with Jan, I had trained everything. I didn't let anything get into my mind and I still lost, you know? So it was more like a strategic thing that went wrong that I think I was able to correct in this fight. <laughs> all the court stuff, all that, is that all done? Is it all resolved now? 
Uh, no, we still have like one more court. Um, we have another court date, um, but thankfully uh, it's like in a couple weeks. So okay. it's, we'll see what happens. <laughs> are, are you happy with the way it's all panning out or is that still TBD? Is it hard to say? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I mean, the financial part, I'm definitely not happy with, you know, <laughs> for me, it doesn't make sense, but um, maybe it could still change. But um, in relation to MOA and how much time, you know, like all yeah. of a sudden you have like these weekends and how, yeah. who gets the kid and stuff like that. That for me, it's fine. You know, I've always, I always want MOA to have, um, how to say, have a relationship with her dad. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons like why we even got married, you know, it's like, so that he's Brazilian, you know, so he could stay in the United States and be able to be close to his daughter, no matter even if we are together one day or not, you know, so I've, that's always a priority for me is that Moa has a relationship both with her mom and her dad. So that for me is good. But the financial part, I mean, definitely when I'm getting like punched in the face and like fighting Angela and stuff, I'm like, freaking, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to have to be like paying whatever, how much money for someone like that says that they can't work because they have like pain on their back. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, come on. <laughs> It were, did is it fair to say you took out some of your frustrations on Angela? <laughs> I mean, yeah, for sure, Def <laughs> definitely, nothing personal against no, Angela, no, no. though. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, but it was definitely, you know, that was I was very grateful um, that, you know, if I didn't do it to her, she was going to do it to me for sure, you know. So I was very grateful that my my work gives me the opportunity, and I wanted. I, this isn't an aggression that like it was just for this fight. You know, this is like the aggression, like you said, like a mechanism 3.0. This is something that was part of our game and our strategy that we want to take all the way to the bell and stuff like that, you know. But it came out and I was able to have this vision with all the craziness that was going through my fight for this, you know, because this is something that my dad and Roger Camus have been telling me to do for a couple of years and I haven't understood. I'm like, what do you mean? I am aggressive. I'm trying to submit the whole time of the fight. You know what I mean? You guys can't see I'm doing everything I can to to close the distance and catch these girls, but they just keep moving. And, I'm, and when I, I pull guard and I do this, I'm being aggressive. But I'm like, oh, okay, now I understand. Like, even if I don't submit, yeah. the judges are there, you know? So we do have to count them in there, you know? So... If I don't submit, at least let me win the round, you know, not be on bottom doing it 100 million submissions where I can't even get a 10 8 round, you know, right, like right. let me sell it to the judges too, you know, and the public and, and let out my aggression. <laughs> um, it was great to see your daughter there. Uh, she's, she's so cute. She's, she's so beautiful. And uh, to see like with your mom, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to see that. Um, was that, correct me if I'm wrong, was that the first time that she has been to one of your fights live? Oh no, no. She's been before. Okay. Yeah. She uh, she's been to a few. She went to she was sad. She wasn't gonna be in my friend in Charlotte. Um so oh, then wow. they moved us. It worked out. Yeah, she was in, yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> and, and and seeing like this is a small intimate area, like I'm sure you see her like when you're out there. What what does that do to you seeing her watching you? Um, I mean I didn't I didn't see her during the fight or oh, anything you didn't? like okay. that. I just saw her yeah, I just saw her after the fight. Um, but yeah, I was so focused in and everything like that. Like that, that's kind of like my moment. I kind of forget Mackenzie, the mom, forget Mackenzie, yeah. you know, and just the fight, you know, but after that, you know, I, I, and I know how, I know how much she likes it. Cause even before camp and stuff, she asked me to put on my walkout music in the car, you know, and she gets like, I ask her, she gets nervous. She says she feels like butterflies in her uh. stomach, you know, so you can tell, but I think it's so much emotion that she's just like, and then it all comes out like she kind of started to cry a little bit, you know, just I think she is so excited, you know, it's a lot of emotion for her. Um, but yeah, usually she'd go on the ring with me, but this time she didn't want it. She was like, no, no, no. Do you think she enjoys <laughs> watching you fight or would she rather not? Um, I think she, I think she likes it. I think she enjoys it. But like I said, I think it's just so much emotion for her. Yeah. I mean, I, from what I, I try to think about it as when it was me, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I think in a couple, uh, she already kind of says, she says she wants to come to the fight, but I mean, I remember growing up when I'm six years old, seven years old, watching my dad compete at jiu-jitsu tournaments and he would be winning and I'd be crying, you know what I mean? Like just so excited, like crying, like, ah, you know? Um, so I think that's kind of what she's feeling, you know, but not that she doesn't want to see it, you know? Okay. Uh, what are you going to do about the management stuff now? Yeah, I mean, I'm talking to some managers. Um, I'm like almost coming in on one manager specifically. So I'm excited about what could come next. 
um, and kind of just the plan, you know, I'm trying to build a plan with my manager, with a, with the manager I choose to go with, um, of how I can get to the belt, you know, what's the best, what's the best route for me, you know, before I was just kind of like, okay, who am I going to fight next, you know, but not with a plan. Sure. But I think now it's time for me to have a plan. <laughs> and, and you mentioned Rose, uh, have you received any feedback that she's kind of been out of the limelight since we last saw her fight last year? Um, do you have any indication as to whether or not she's interested in that? No, no, no not yet. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> Is the UFC interested in that? I think so. From what I saw, I mean, Dana said it would, it would be a good fight. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's behind. I don't know if like Rose, I know that I, cause I follow her on Instagram, you know, so I, I've seen her like, um, compete in some ADCC, um, tournament. So that's, Right. she's training you know yeah. competing that's cool but i don't know i don't know if they need to see where she's at what her what she wants to do but hopefully she wants to do the fight i think it'll be good especially yeah, since huge. i see her training like competing in the adcc so that's cool um when would you like to return in a perfect world uh like september okay September. Would be good. and yeah. if rose isn't available is there anyone else that comes to mind I mean, I would like like a rematch with um, with Yanis Shavnan. You know, I think it was a close fight, um, and how she beat Jessica Andrade, uh, Andrade, and she. I don't know. I think that's a fight that I would like to get. We all kind of fought each other, you know, yeah. in the in the top. So, I mean, I imagine like a. Uh, rematch. Some of us are gonna have sequels with with other yeah, yeah. fighters, you know. So if I'm gonna have one, I would like to have it with uh, with you. Of you know, of all those fighters in that weight class, I, I feel like you're one of the more popular ones. So I, I feel you know this is just the reality of the situation. I I don't think you'll need many wins to be in that title picture. How many do you think you need to be in the conversation with the champion? Um, I mean, I think one more, one more good one. I could already be there. <laughs> You know, if I if I continue to have a good performance like I did to um, Saturday, you yeah. know, it's like, I mean, Angela, she is number fourteen on the rank, so she's behind me, you know. But I mean, people don't don't realize like a lot of the girls would have given up in that in the fight, you know. Like she she's tough, you know, and she's fought all the best. Like she's fought almost everyone, you know what I mean? And like maybe it looked like oh, the two times I fought someone in the top five, I lost to Marine and Tian, but. Um, the strategy that we came in with Angela, that's something that I think will be effective with is what I should have done with Ian right. and Marina. You right. know what I mean? Right. But I didn't, I hadn't, I wasn't able to put that into practice or understand that or even train like ground and pound, you know, to hit in the right spot and all these things that I did in this camp. So I think um, independent, if it was behind some, someone behind me in the rink or someone in front of me, I think if I can have a good performance, like I did Saturday, maybe just submit, be able to get the submission in the end, then I think I could be in for the titles really soon. So the fight has come and gone. You won. You were very impressive, very dominant, very one-sided fight. Um, you said that hopefully this, the, you know, the, the, the family stuff is going to get resolved soon. You'll find a manager soon. Do you feel like maybe the storm of the past year in your life, is starting to go away like do you are you feeling good about what's to come do you feel like brighter days are ahead how are you feeling now that you know you're kind of turning the corner here on these multiple big you know things to deal with in one's life yeah for sure i, de I definitely do i mean just the fact to have like the performance i did in the conditions of my camp that i had you know imagine like when i'm training like full focus you know everything's all organized in my life you know like i think We'll be at a really good phase of uh, my career. So I'm definitely seeing just many opportunities coming ahead of me. Um, you know, just ways to work on my brand, you know, make, like my brand, my image, you know, so that we can set it up for even when I do stop fighting eventually, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and yeah, just being more efficient, you know, I think even like this, I had like such a dominant performance, but I'm still getting hit, you know, so there are things that I'm, I'm wanting to be more efficient. I want to have a since my style is so aggressive and forward, you know, um, I don't think it's the most safe uh, style of fighting, you know. So since I want to have a longer career, I want to try and be as efficient as possible, you know. Um, so I definitely do see, like, the light at the end of the tunnel. And, of course, I'm never going to be problem-free. No one's problem-free. You know, we always have new problems. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think this was a pretty big... Um, storm that I was going through, but we're, we're, we're getting past it. <laughs> and it was, it worked out for the best. 
Great. Well, I'm very happy to hear that and uh, very happy for you. And I'm, I'm sorry you went through all of that over the past year, but I hope that those days okay. are behind you. And uh, you, I mean, the fact that you looked like that and fought like that in the midst of everything that you were going through on Saturday, I can't even imagine when, when, you know, when the water is calm in your life, what uh, you will do in the cage. So um, keep it up. All the best to you. Congrats on the the win and, and, and hopefully better days are ahead, less stressful days are ahead for you and your family. And you can just focus on the good things and the fighting and all that other stuff. And, and, and good luck getting that big fight that you're looking for next. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ariel. All always right. good to talk to you. Yes, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mackenzie. There she is, Mackenzie Dern, coming off that big win. Mackenzie Dern 3.0.